Hi, my name is William Shelley. I've been a conservation intern at the Toledo Museum of Art for the past two years. Today I would like to discuss a conservation treatment on a Greek kylix I performed. The conservation treatment of the Greek kylix dating from 550 BCE involved the removal of salts. Porous archaeological artifacts such as ceramics often contain soluble salts such as chlorides, nitrates, or sulfates. They can also include insoluble salts such as carbonates, phosphates, or sulfides. Groundwater or seawater can carry soluble salts into the pores of the artifact during burial and after excavation the salts can crystallize at or just below the surface. When an object enters the museum, water vapor in the air can dissolve the soluble salts, which then move to the surface as the moisture is drawn out through evaporation. Insoluble salts, however, do not dissolve and they will not cause damage to the artifact. It is important to remove soluble salts, both aesthetically as well as to preserve the object, as they can cause damage to the artifact. In the case of the kylix, we determined they were soluble salts from burial which had been dissolved from environmental and casework issues. You can see the salts as a white efflorescence on the surface of the kylix. We examined the kylix through the microscope and took pictures through the microscope, as you can see in this slide. The next step was to identify the salts. We worked closely with professor and chemist Dr. Beth Wides from Lourdes University. We used different methods to test the salts. We used test strips at the museum while the Fourier Transform Infrared Spectrometer was utilized at Lourdes University. The FTIR showed a spectrum which is similar to a fingerprint. We determined the salts in the kylix were chlorides as well as acetate. The conservation treatment involved soaking the object in deionized water. In this image, you can see the kylix has come apart in two pieces. This is due to the fact that the water has dissolved the restored adhesive. We tested the water daily with the conductivity meter and we also changed the water daily. When we had determined we had drawn out all of the soluble salts from the object, it was time to reassemble the kylix. The first step was to determine how each piece fit together. Once completed, we started gluing the pieces back together. We used a conservation material called B72 to glue them back together. Once we had the cup together, we applied the foot. We had to make sure that the cup was level and so we used a leveling tool. The next step was to fill in the cracks as well as the area missing between the foot and the bowl. We used a conservation material that would not expand or shrink over time. There were holes in the side of the cup from an ancient repair. We tested the material inside the hole, which proved positive for lead, a common technique in the ancient time of repair work. We did not fill these holes so the visitor can learn from them. After completing the fills of the cracks, it was time to impaint. The color of the fill was left slightly off from the original color of the glaze of the bowl, as this will identify to the visitor where the kylix has been broken and restored. Once treatment was complete, the conservation staff took after treatment photographs. This Greek kylix is now on view at the Toledo Museum of Art in the Classic Court Gallery.